Well, I'm out here in Massachusetts giving Steve a hand with Arabella, and I'm uh, working on fitting the breast hook uh, for the boat right now. Uh, one of the things that is needed when you do some fine pairing in here is having a good slick. And this little two inch slick I made prior to coming out here. So take a look on how I did that. just got back from a home improvement chain that is here in the Midwest of the United States called Menards. And I was picking up some lumber, but when I was walking by um, the tool section, which I commonly do just to see what's there, I found this chisel here. Uh, it was on sale for around $10. Uh, normally it sells for about $14. But when I took a look at it, uh, it's a two inch chisel and because I was getting prepared to go out to Massachusetts and work with Steve on Arabella while Alec is on sabbatical uh, next week, I thought perhaps this would be a good chisel that I could make a slick out of. So it's a two inch wide uh, Irving, Irwin, sorry, Irwin, which is made by uh, Maples. Um, I have several Maples chisels and uh, I really like them. So I'm pretty confident that it's pretty good quality steel. Uh, so what I'll need to do is to change the handle primarily and I'm going to dress out the steel a little bit and make it uh, a little more presentable. So the uh, first thing I need to do is to remove this handle. So the next step will be to put an angle on here, the way that the slick handle can come up like so. All slicks have their handle tipping up slightly, so the handle was on here that it'd be tipped up about 10 degrees. And the reason for that is that when you have a hold of the handle and you're pairing with it, you don't want your knuckles to be hitting the work surface. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to uh, heat this up and put about a 10 degree angle on there. Now that I've got the tang bent on the chisel, I need to retemper the uh, blade. So what I did was I cleaned off the back side of it on my flap wheel, and then I finished that off 
with a, uh, some sandpaper on a flat piece of wood. Uh, so now I've got it uh, cleaned down to about uh, 120 grit. And mainly that is so that I can see the color change when I temper it. So I will uh, take this uh, tonight and temper that in the kitchen oven. But in the meantime, I need to think about the handle. Now, I had this sculpture that I had done uh, probably 25, maybe 30 years ago. And uh, I've decommissioned it a long time ago using some of the metal for different other sculptures. And I saved these spindles that were in it, and they're all cherry. So I decided that I would use uh, one of those. They'd end up being just about exactly the right length for the handle which is about 14 to 16 inches, something like that. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll put this on the lathe and return it down uh, to the shape that I want from the handle. The nice thing is that I still have the spindle marks uh, for the lathe head in the end of it and also on the other end. So it should be very easy to get it recentered. Now I've got the blade out of the oven uh, and it's been tempered and you can see by this kind of nice straw color that it is that it's been tempered to the right temperature. So the next step is to start working on getting the tool marks out of it. So I'm taking these out, I'm starting with some 80 grit sandpaper that's mounted to it piece of uh, flat wood. After I got that all sanded, I then set up a jig in my stationary belt sander in order to get the proper 25 degree bevel that I was looking for. I then sharpened it on a stone, putting a little micro bevel on it, and then honing it on a honing strap. In order to attach blade to the handle, I'm using some JB Weld here. This is a, is an epoxy. It's really strong material. And uh, you mix it one to one.
so that's how I made this slick. Uh, I finished the steel to about a 220 grit and then just used paste wax to protect it. And the handle I oiled with some Danish oil. So what makes a slick differ from a chisel is you do not hit a slick with a mallet like you would a chisel like this with a mallet to, to get the force. With a slick, it's a matter of actually using your body and your arms and push on it so that when you're able to hold it flat like this, and this is one of the reasons why the handle is angled, is then you can actually even use your body to push in there to pare out the wood that you want to. So it's, uh, this is a, a piece of um, rootstock oak, so it's extremely hard. And as you can see, it's cutting it very well. Uh, the point is only take little small shavings off at a time with a tool like this. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with it came out. I'm really pleased with its performance. So thanks for watching, and remember, if you're gonna make it, make it beautiful.